What is going on guys, Eagle Aquatics back here and in today's video we're going to be going over the completed plumbing of this new 125 gallon reef tank system. As you guys know, if you watched my last uh, subscriber based video explaining you know, why I was off YouTube for so long, what, what are the big plans for this new setup, you'll know this was the next video in line. We have now finished the plumbing on this tank and I'm going to show you guys everything we did, the materials we needed, and how we got everything to where it is now. Uh, so as you guys know, this is the new tank. This is a Marineland style 125 gallon tank with corner overflows. Yes, these are in the corners, not in the middle like my last tank. So I think it's gonna make for a lot cooler setup and uh, it's, it's gonna be a lot more interesting. Then the last setup. So taking it underneath the tank. I flashed this in the last video, but now you guys are seeing pretty much the completed, uh, completed plumbing setup right here. The corner overflows. Maybe I should start up there. We'll explain those here. This is the return. Here's the drain. I glue the returns to the bulkheads. The bulkheads are just screwed in. I don't silicone or anything. As long as they're tight, the gasket seals it. No problem. I just uh, snugly fit uh, the drain in. There's no need to glue that into the bulkhead, but I do glue the returns into the bulkhead. Here's the other return also glued in, and there is the drain on that side. So there's the setup down in there. Pretty clean. I do like those overflows and how Marineland does it on the corner instead of the middle. So working our way down, if you guys have been with the channel for a while, you know my last setup, you know how we plumb the bulkheads. So the bulkheads come down obviously right there. And then what we like to do is glue uh, small pieces of PVC. This is, I think these are five inch pieces of PVC. We glue them into the bulkhead, put the bulkhead down, slide it through the hole in the tank, put it down, tighten it up, and then we connect the bulkhead pipe to the other sections of pipe via one inch flexible hose. This is the clear flexible hose that uh, you see a lot of on soft line reef tanks or you can pick up at Lowe's. One inch uh, soft hose and it's hose clamped to the other sections of pipe to make it easy to remove the bulkhead without having to cut it because it's glued to the rest of the sections. You could just take the hose clamp off, uh, slide the pipes out the bottom, uh, take it off the small section of the bulkhead, and then you can pop the bulkhead right up without having to cut anything or ruin any of your piping. So if you ever had to take down the tank or service pipes, really easy to take them apart. You could clean them. You could transport them without having to cut anything and remake anything. So this is totally reusable if I ever took down this tank and set it up somewhere else. So that's why we like to do that. Very, very uh, good idea if you guys ever tried that. So they both come down. Both the return and the drains are both one inch. Like I said, this whole system is one inch PVC. Now, if you guys notice, this isn't the gray PVC like I used the, uh, on the last tank, the sprinkler grade stuff. This is just regular PVC. It's a lot cheaper. Uh, it might not look as good, but when you're using this much pipe for a system like this, it gets expensive pretty quick. And that gray stuff is really expensive compared to the white. And I wasn't really looking to do anything special uh, appearance wise um, with this tank. So it worked perfectly. They come down here nineties and then they shoot over there. I'll go over the returns first. So this is the return from the pump from the basement. So it comes over here or no, that's actually the drain. My bad. That's the drain right here. It comes down all the way over here, dumps to a 90. Here's a union, the other disconnect to disconnect these pipes. So if I unscrewed this union that, and then unscrewed the hose clamp there, I could drop this whole section, service it, transport it, whatever I gotta do. And then it drains in the wall through another 90 right here. Same with the other return. It's the same exact setup over here. Two flex pipes attaching the small piece of pipe glued to the bulkhead to the rest of the pipes with hose clamps. There is the other return coming down here. Same thing to a 90, to a union, to disconnect it, and then shooting into the wall down to the basement. So those two are the drains. They are not the same length because the drains don't really matter length lengthwise. They don't have to be the same, same exact length of pipe. 
uh, for both sides. They could be different lengths. This one's a lot shorter than this one, but as long as they're draining the water, it's not a huge deal. Where the length of each pipe matters is the return. That's why this is the way it is. So this is also one inch. This comes up from the pipe, so or up from the pump down to the basement. So it comes through the wall to this 90 right here. Shoots over here, here's another 90. Up to a union to disconnect the whole system if I ever needed to. Up to this T valve right here. This is a T, a PVC T, directly in the center of both bulkheads. There's the one return and there's the other return. This is directly centered and it's very important to have the T centered on the tank because you want both sides of the tank getting equal pressure and equal water flow uh, from the pump. Because if you had a T, if it was unequal like these drains, if the T was over here and you had this long section and short section, this side of the tank is gonna get a lot more flow than that side. So it's very important to have the T in the middle so they both get equal water flow and water movement. So there's the T, it shoots off to that side, to the return, and then goes all the way up there. Oh, she can't, there we go. And then this T does the same thing, shoots on over to that return, bam, over to there. So they're both gonna be supplied with equal water flow. And then of course we got J-hook supporting. There's two supporting the return, one, two. And then there are two supporting this drain right here. The long section's pipe to support the weight. This drain didn't really need one because it's so short, so we didn't put one on there. But like I said, guys, the whole idea of this system is to make it easily serviceable, easily transportable, and uh, if anything ever leaked or broke, easy to take apart. That's why we got unions here and hose clamps up there. So you can just detach these sections, service them as you can, and uh, it minimizes the amount of cutting or hacking apart you have to do uh, if you ever had to transport the tank. So. That's basically it for underneath Let's the tank. Let's go downstairs. All right, guys, we're now downstairs and you're looking at the bottom of the floor up there where the pipes come down. So they go through the wall, the pipes come down here. I'm gonna insert a segment of video showing before they put the drywall on the house, how my dad put this in the wall and how he drilled the holes, how he figured out where it's supposed to be. Just a quick uh, glance to, so you can see what the PVC looks like behind the walls. Now it comes down to here, three pipes. These are the drains. These two are the drains right here. This is the return, which you can see the check valve on here. Check valves on the return. Not completely necessary for the setup considering how big the sump is. That tank upstairs could never drain enough water to overflow this sump down here. But I always have these on here. Uh, just as an extra safety precaution. It also acts as a union too. If you have to unscrew it, take pipes off. That's another source of a union. They're clamped to this two by six here with these uh, piping clamps. And then they jut across the stairs over the sump over there. So I'm gonna take you guys over there. We're gonna go in between the stairs now. There's the sump. This is the setup in the stairs. So we're underneath the stairs right now. So this is how we got to set up. So the drains are coming down. There's those two 90s. They come all the way over here to two more 90s. And I'll show you guys where those go once I get over to the sump side. So these are the drains. We got two J hooks right here, supporting the weight of the pipe. And then here is the beast running the whole system. We'll just go where it starts here. Here's the one inch bulkhead. We drilled the tank with a uh, diamond hole saw. So we drilled it, inputted the bulkhead right there, and then at, just like the overflows upstairs, we gl uh, glued a small section of PVC pipe, about a five inch section, not even, into the bulkhead and secured it to the rest of the system. Right here with the one inch flexible hose, 
with two hose clamps to make it completely detachable and serviceable. And then that comes to this section right here. We got a ball valve right here in between the sump and the pump right here. The only reason for this is to be able to cut the water supply from the sump in the case that I have to service this pump. So, which is probably gonna be once or twice a year. Just do yearly maintenance on this, uh, clean the impeller, all that stuff. That's why we have this to cut the water supply. And then we have a union just before the pump to detach the pump easily to service it. it shoots up here, all one inch. They're one inch fittings on this uh, Panda World pump too. They come up to this 90 to another ball valve here. Now the purpose of this ball valve being above the pump is to control the flow of the pump because these don't have a remote or anything to control the flow. It's just one flow all the time. So here's the ball valve right here. This, you can control the flow, slow it down, uh, leave it open to get full flow. But I'm thinking with the power of this pump, I'll have to cut the flow down a little bit. So that's why I put that here, control the power. Um, and then it goes up to that check valve right there, which has a union on it to detach the whole pump. And this unscrews, this isn't glued to the pump. The pump has threaded threaded inserts on it, which that is screwed on. And then, yeah, the whole system comes apart so I can take the pump off. Pump is mounted two by four here, two by four here, and then a two by six that it's mounted to. The two by fours are just mounted to these studs holding the stairs up. Nothing too crazy, pretty easy. Um, so about the pump itself, this pump is a Panworld 200 PS. Um, it's Panworld's external magnetic drive pump. It's the 1,750 gallon per hour pump and it is a crazy head pressure of 39 feet. So I don't think we'll have any problems with head pressure with this guy. So let's go to the other side and check out the sump. So here's the sump side of the plumbing. So really all there is to see here is the drain section. Cause that of course has to go all the way to the other side of the sump since the uh, feed for the return is right here. So as you guys seen, these one inch pipes come underneath the stairs, hit these two nineties right here. They're side by side all the way down and they're on a gradual slope downward, a gradual decline downward all the way to the end of the sump. And they're kind of resting on the rim of the sump over here. And then they dump right down into the sock area. So here's where the sock sits, basically. Kind of like my last setup, if you guys remember the last sump, the pipes come down. They're gonna be sitting two or one and a half inches below the water line. The water line of this pump's gonna be, or the water line of the sump is gonna be 11 inches. These guys I think are nine and a half inches down, or no, they're nine and a half inches off the bottom of the tank. So they're gonna be sitting in the water. It'll reduce noise and uh, you won't have any splashing or major evaporation with that either. So they're dumping into the sump. We mounted the seven inch sock holder down here. This is the same one I had in my old 40 gallon tank. Uh, the flange on it is too thin to fit over a 125 gallon frame. So we actually um, hot glued it to the glass back here. And it's like seriously solid. We put an extra piece of acrylic to support it from the bottom. And it's, it's really solid, so it's pretty cool. And we had to put this down uh, anyway because it would have been too, way too high up here. There would have been splashing and it would be crazy. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So, and my, my dad being a carpenter, he built these supports for the pipes and he screwed them all to these two by sixes along the wall. So they're on a gradual decline, as you can see. One, they're going down slowly. So, so the pipes are slanted down to help with water flow. Uh, so there's no backups or anything like that. And then they're all clamped down onto these studs right here. And then uh, all there is to see as far as the pump feed down here is the other side of the bulkhead. This is a right one here. inch bulkhead off BRS.com. Uh, this is their standard bulkhead. The size hole you need to drill to get this through a tank is an inch and three quarter inch hole. So, you can't really find whole diamond saws for cutting glass that big inside of stores. So I actually got this one off Amazon. It's the Drillax brand. 
uh, if this thing will focus, it's an inch, inch and three quarter uh, diamond hole saw and it worked absolutely amazing. It's uh, relatively affordable. I think it was like 10 bucks or something like that. It, it worked perfectly. And I have this little screen uh, that I just put in there uh, to prevent anything big from going in there and clogging the pump. So, so yeah, that's all there is to see uh, on the plumbing setup. So it's gonna be extremely exciting to, to fire this thing up and see how everything works. It's gonna be awesome. So I can't wait to show you guys. I'm gonna do a full video on everything working and running, uh, see if I would change anything. I'll tell you guys how it all works, how good it works, how it doesn't. Who knows? I, I can't wait to fire it up and see how it all works. But uh, the next video you guys are gonna see is the sump video. Cause that's the next thing we gotta build for this tank. It's gonna be a three ch chamber sump since it's 125 gallon. I'm gonna do each section of acrylic walls um, per frame brace right here. So there's gonna be one section here or one wall and one wall there, making it three sections. This is gonna be the sock section, probably the skimmer, maybe reactors or whatever in here. This is gonna be the refugium section you know, all kinds of chato, maybe inverts, all kinds of different stuff. And then this is gonna be the return section, uh, which I, I, who knows, there's so much room in here, it's gonna be interesting in itself. So I have the acrylic panels cut right now. Those are all of them. So we just gotta build the sump and that's gonna be the next video. It's gonna be pretty cool. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you got uh, some inspiration to do a basement sump of your own. Cause literally, I mean, this concept applies for any size basement sump. Just on a, if you wanna do a smaller scale, bigger scale, I don't care. You could do this with a 40 gallon basement sump. You could do it with a trough on the ground. You know, PVC, you could take some tips from this video, do your own setup. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys found this to be pretty cool. Uh, please leave some comments down below what you guys think of this. Uh, compared to my last plumbing on my old 20, 125 gallon tank. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what videos you guys want to see of this setup. Because obviously we're just getting started. And uh, let, me know, let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time.